And good afternoon, everybody. Chris Bartell here from the Cascade Pacific Council of the Boy Scouts of America. And in today's Wednesday webinar, we're going to dive into sea scouting. It's going to be an awesome, awesome uh, webinar today. We're going to learn all about sea scouting. For those of you who haven't even heard about it before, this is going to be great. For those of you who heard a little bit, this will be great too. So we're going to dive into that here with Vice Commodore Neil Smith here in just a moment. But first, as always, we're going to share the latest news around the CPC, around the Cascade Pacific Council. But first, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We're almost there. Happy Thanksgiving Eve. Super excited for those of you who are, uh, who are sharing some Dutch oven recipes with family and making a, making a turkey in Dutch ovens. That'd be fantastic to share those pictures. So please uh, let us know. Uh, but for those of you just enjoying family time, we just thank you so much for just all you do for scouting. So, so grateful. This has been, as we all know, a crazy, crazy last year and a half, and just so grateful to every single one of you, scouts and volunteers and parents and donors and everybody who has supported us. Just an incredible, just an incredible group of folks you are, and uh, we're just so thankful that we get to do this thing called scouting. We get the kids outdoors and uh, adventuring and learning and growing and getting to do it together, and uh, we're slowly but surely, it seems like we're getting back to it, so that's pretty pretty exciting. We know lots of lots of scout units are having adventures and doing great things and uh, and staying safe, and so we're just really thankful that uh, that all of you have continued scouting during this time and, uh, and are getting back to it, even if it's just uh, getting back to it. And for all of you who are newbies here, uh, just so you know, we do these Wednesday, Wednesday webinars, obviously every Wednesday at noon. They're live on Facebook, for those of you who are watching on Facebook, but also we record them. They're at cpcbsa.org slash webinars, and they're on a variety of topics, although some weeks we just cover sort of the basic news. So what's great is you can just tune in here for just the first few minutes and kind of get the latest news and events, deadlines, things like that, that are occurring around the council. So let's dive in here. A couple of quick things here. Weekend horse rides, they are going as we speak all the way through December 19th. So for those of you who have not been to Butte Creek before, our scout ranch, you should head out there. Grab your family, grab some friends, and, uh, and join us at uh, Butte Creek Scout Ranch for some family horse rides. Also for scout units, of course, as well. Really awesome. You could choose from a half day to a full day. It is just a great, great experience. And we have the largest herd of horses of any council in the United States, in the Boy Scouts of America. So it's kind of neat. So come on out and check out the horses, meet the Wranglers. Great, great time for one and all. Also, uh, speaking of horses, for those of you who have not heard about Horse Trek, this is literally a once in a lifetime adventure. It is incredible. It is a horse trek old school, like real deal horse trek, 165 miles between Butte Creek and Camp Baldwin up on Mount Hood. It is incredible. A week where you get to learn about horses in the wilderness and packing your horses, taking care of horses. It is the real deal. So check it out at cpcbsa.org slash horses. You can check out the horse trek information there. We have two treks. So one goes east, one goes west. And basically it's June and August are both of those horse treks. So check it out. It is just an awesome awesome adventure and registration is now open. So let's dive in here. Next up, we have summer camp. Of course, as you know, reservations are now open. Family camping, however, is going to open later uh, in 2022, just as an FYI, but just some really great experiences that we have in store for summer camp. So we've got new ones for Weeblos. We've got, of course, Butte Creek Scout Ranch. We've got some Weeblos camping at Camp Baldwin that's going to be awesome. And of course, we have all of our camps open for Scouts BSA youth and the older youth as well. And also we have Winter Lodges happening for some of you who are able to get into the lottery and whatnot for Winter Lodges. Super excited to, to get up there and see all of you enjoying that as well. Let's see. Also, wanted to let you know that we actually have a tool here. For those of you who have scout units who have a Facebook page, highly recommend that you start a public Facebook book page. And it's a way to just promote what you're doing out there in scouting. It's a great, great tool. And also, I know it's like one more thing that you can feel like, oh gosh, it's one more thing I have to do. But however, you can also connect to the Cascade Pacific Council. And what we can do is we can actually post there for you. Just some occasional posts, you know, kind of keeping it updated and, and lively and whatnot with motivational quotes or outdoor tips, things like that. And so you can connect to us there at cpcbsa.org slash marketing is how you can do that. So if you have to be an admin for that, there's actually a how-to video on that page at cpcbsa.org slash marketing. But if you're an admin and you want to connect your, your troop or packer or, or units page to us, 
request and let us post, that'd be fantastic. And of course, what we'll do is we'll tell people to message you if they have any questions. So kind of a neat, uh, neat way to keep that lively and updated. Also, we have a great offer for websites. So for your scout unit, uh, wants to have a website, we have we have a pre-registration actually happening now at cpcbsa.org slash marketing for uh, a new website hosting and a domain name, all that kind of stuff. It's basically a half price deal. Super, super awesome. We're trying to get enough units to sign up for this, to pre-register for this so we can kick it off. And basically, you get to use this tool called Wix. It's a page building tool, a website building tool. Super, super easy. You can see an example of the website over here on the right. It's really, really simple. And it takes you, gosh, you know, an hour or two to build a website. Pretty, pretty neat. And to get it at half price. So check that out. All right, a couple of upcoming events here. Just wanted to let you know about this. These seem like they're a ways away, but registration is open and opening for these things. So check it out. Save the dates for Wood Badge, World Jamboree, and National Jamboree. Wood Badge is going to be awesome. We're actually going to have a webinar on that coming soon. So you'll get to find out more about that. A great opportunity for adults to grow in leadership and skills and whatnot. That's happening in September of next year, but you can actually start registering for that today at cpcbsa.org slash woodbadge. Also, World Jamboree and National Jamboree, massive, awesome, huge events involving scouts from, in one case, all over the world, and in another here just across the United States. If you've not experienced that, go check out these domains, these URLs here, these websites here at 2023wsjkorea.org for World Jamboree. That's 2023wsjkorea.org for World Jamboree. And for National Jamboree, just go to jamboree.scouting.org or cpcbsa.org slash jamboree, and you can find out more there. Really incredible, incredible experiences to meet scouts from all over the United States or all over the world. Really incredible opportunities for your scouts. Also, December 4th, we have obviously Scouting for Food and Wakanak is happening. Uh, we are actually switching Scouting for Food actually into spring for next year, but a lot of units are still doing Scouting for Food this December, which is awesome. But we've actually, it's been requested of us by the food banks and the pantries that we help out to help them replenish in spring. So we're going to be launching this next year, a spring Scouting for Food, and that's going to be the first weekend of March in 2022. And so that's going to be another awesome opportunity to serve. So we'll have more on that later, but just put that in your calendar as well. Other opportunities to serve, of course, we always uh, like to promote Solve. There's always lots of great beach cleanups and actually an upcoming Forest Park Ivy removal. They have lots of great opportunities to serve, of course, in Oregon here. Sorry, Washington Scouts. But uh, but you can, you can mosey on over across the river if you want and join in too. But the Seaside Beach Cleanup is always fun. But anyway, go to solveoregon.org for tons of tons of opportunities to serve there. Also, another thing coming down the pipe here in December and January is the College of Youth Leadership. A little bit different setup than we've had before. This is going to be all virtual, but also it's spread out over time. So you actually have these classes on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. again in December and January. Check it out at cpcbsa.org slash CYL. These are great opportunities for older scouts to just learn some new leadership skills. And so, boy, it helps you with your scout unit, but also for life. So that's what we're all about, right? Check it out at cpcbsa.org slash CYL. All right. We also have some upcoming webinars here. December 1st, First is about empathy and communication. It's going to be an updated version of the one we did before. So that'll be really, really awesome. Some great leadership skills. It's going to be really great to, to hear more about that, learn more about that as for scouts and uh, for leadership too. Also, December 8th, we're going to talk about Eagle Scout scholarships. We sent out some emails about this. So the registration for that is open. The application process is starting here soon. So check your email for that, for those of you who have been Eagle Scouts and are seniors in high school. We also have a whole bunch of upcoming webinars. We've got ones on backcountry hygiene and leave no trace and unit financing and wood badge, of course, as I mentioned. So lots of stuff coming down the pipe. It's going to be awesome. All right, enough of that. Let's dive in here. We're going to talk Sea Scouting. And with us today is Vice Commodore Neil Smith. I'm going to give him the ball, let him share his screen and tell us all about Sea Scouting. Welcome, Neil. How are you doing today? Oh, you'll we'll have to unmute there. <laughs> yep. Sorry about there that. No <laughs> Thanks, problem. Chris. Hey. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, great to be here. Um, so what, what I'd like to do today, uh, hopefully you can see my screen here. Um, I, I gave this uh, presentation um, at uh, um, University of Scouting, 
And uh, what I'd like to do is to go through that again for those who might have missed that. And you'll have also... to actually sh your screen isn't showing, so go ahead and uh -oh. pull that up one more time. Okay, it's all good. Let's... We do have a great picture though up of. of okay, your... now, now can we see the? <laughs> yep, go ahead and. Okay, good. Present. Sorry. So anyway, uh, so this is what I presented at at uh, University of Scouting. Um, wanted to make sure everybody got a chance to to to, to hear it if they were interested. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll go through this. Um, so there's my information, contact information, um, uh, and um, but that was the date that we, we did at University of Scouting. If you haven't done University of Scouting in the past, uh, you should probably try and put that on your calendar for next year. At any rate, um, a lot of people don't know about Sea Scouting, but we've actually been around for a long, long time. And so it was originally kind of the Boy Scouts of America's first uh, high adventure program. Uh, so um, let's let's dive into this. And again, if people have questions, um, let's let's try and take those here. Let's see if okay. So and gang, um, just one second here. I'll, I'll let you yep. know. You could throw things into questions into the chat. That'll actually come to Neil and I, and so we can get to those at the end. And Neil, if you want to hit the share full screen, let's see if we can see the full screen here. Uh, present mode. We were, it's oh. funny, gang, we were all, we were, Neil and I were talking. It's like, that's always, always something, no matter how many times we do these Zoom calls, you know, we've oh, done these for a year and a half and, okay. and it may be on your other screen, I'm wondering. Let's, okay. Let's check it out here. I, I have three screens, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so that's, let's see. Hmm. You could probably do cool. stop share and then. Okay, let me do Choose that, another then. screen. Okay, so let me, where share if i can he's in sea scouts you know he's not on land much yeah, gang, so yeah, you know yeah, right okay <laughs> why is it new share let's do oh you know what i think that's the one i hit the wrong share button how's that there one? we go beautiful okay okay so i was sharing the, the the wrong version of the presentation so anyway there you go uh but anyway um lord baden powell um his older brother warrington uh, was in the Navy, and you can see a little picture there of him, but um, that's where Sea Scouts uh, really started was, again, not too long after Boy Scouts in the UK started, and you can see Lord Baden-Powell there, uh, early picture, and a Sea Scout. Uh, so Sea Scouts have been around pretty much from the beginning, almost, um, and you can see the that, um, but in the U.S., it really started in 1912. Uh, again, US 1910 was when Boy Scouts started. Uh, there was a, uh, a troop that uh, um, had a, a patrol of older boys and they started doing, uh, doing high adventure stuff on boats. And, um, the, and then later that turned into uh, a full sized uh, ship, uh, just like Boy Scout or Scouts BSA troops we have um, ships, and this is this is considered our first uh, 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 ship uh, was the Pioneer in 1912. So yes, we are older than Cub Scouts, and we're one month older than Eagle rank. But any rate, so that's we we have been around for a while, and basically this was kind of the high adventure uh, program for for scouting. Uh, some interesting little tidbits because uh, I thought it was was pretty interesting. Um, originally, um, they were in the same uniform, uh, khaki and so forth. But and you had to uh, do the scout oath and law. And originally, it was past the tenderfoot requirement. Although it was later changed to the first class, um, and you had to be uh, 15 years old and weigh at least 112 pounds originally. So uh, that was later, they dropped the, 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 uh, the, the, the pound requirement, but uh, that's where uh, you'll notice um, the Sea Scout emblem has, is basically an anchor with the first class emblem on top of it. So there's always been this close connection between the first class rank and Sea Scouts. We don't have that requirement anymore, but that's why our uh, logo is, uh, ha is, is tied to the first class um, badge and so forth. Uh, we were originally called Sea Scouts. Uh, then when Explorer came or, exploring came around in, in um, uh, uh, 49, we became Sea Explorers. So if you have you know, great grandparents or grandparents or whatever, they may be referred to it as Sea Explorers. Um, and that's, uh, but it's the same thing. And then uh, in uh, 
1972, we became co-ed. So we've been doing the whole co-ed thing for a long time. Um, so there's nothing new. Uh, C-SCAT units can be male only, female only, or co-ed. Uh, so it just depends on the unit, how they want to do it. In uh, 1988, uh, uh, we became part of the venturing program. Um, and so we follow the, 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 what you think of as the classic uh, requirements joining uh, as venturing. So, um, and then in 2016, we became our own program again. Uh, not under the venturing, we've always been where, where we, they put us, but uh, we're our own program and that's when the, the name became back to Sea Scout. So actually it was after, after Sea Explorers, we went to um, Sea, uh, sea Scouts as part of venturing too. So at any rate, uh, but we've been playing on boats for, for um, all that time. That, this is one a picture w was in the San Francisco Bay Area. So today, um, 14 or older, uh, or 13 finished the eighth grade and under 21. So we mentioned uh, the different kinds of units. Um, and we used to have a sea base off of Marine Drive. And I know people have questions about that. So I can speak a little bit to that. Um, but I know that I, I get asked questions about the sea base and so forth. So we don't have it anymore, but I can maybe uh, give a little bit of history um, and, and tell people about that that might be curious and so forth. Units can be power, sail, or both. Um, uh, our, our ship, uh, our unit uh, used to have uh, a sailboat as well as a powerboat. When we got away from the sea base, we uh, give up our sailboat um, and, and are, are strictly power right now, although we're getting opportunities to do sail too. So uh, it's not that, that we can't do that too, because we uh, talking to somebody today about uh, taking us out on a sailboat. So at any rate, but we're called ships, just like a Cub Scout pack uh, or uh, a Scouts BSA troop um, or venturing crew, we're ships. So the, the other strange piece about Sea Scouts is, is that we have a name. <laughs> uh, um, so a ship has a number, minus 202, but we also have a name. My ship's name is, is Deja Vu. Um, and that's uh, in, in our council typically been the sailboat's name takes on the unit's name, but that's not always the case. And so um, the only place I've ever heard of, uh, of a unit having a name before was when my son went to uh, Jamboree and they, he was in the snowboard troop, but, <laughs> uh, but, but ships have names. So don't be surprised about that. And a ship's name does not necessarily mean that's their vessel's name. So this was very confusing to me when I first started doing scouting, uh, sea scouting uh, was what's the whole vessel name thing all about. Currently, this is what we've got. Uh, we've got uh, uh, several uh, units in the area. Um, so you can sort of see the, the numbers here, um, but uh, some of the Vancouver area, mostly Portland, uh, although we've got one up in the Dalles, um, that sort of thing as well. So uh, here in this, this area. So if you have questions, we can, we can chat, kind of maybe point you to different units, just like with uh, troops, I would encourage people if they're interested to check out a variety of units uh, to kind of figure out what the best match is. Um, so, um, and you can, this is from the, the council website. You can see the URL there. Uh, that's, that's a Sea Scout, uh, uh, the pro, under the program Sea Scouts and you, there's the meet our ships section and you can, you can get the contact information for all of those folks. Um, what do we do? Um, yes, we have meetings. Um, we often meet on Saturdays and instead of camping, we go on cruises. Although not always, we sometimes do date, uh, stuff on land too, uh, but uh, definitely the whole boat thing is what we're about. And so we go on cruises and so forth. Um, like uh, districts, yeah, you, your troop may be used to going to camperies. Well, we have a thing called a regatta that we hold in the spring and think of it kind of like a campery, but because there aren't as many units, ships, um, we actually do it in a larger area. So uh, we, we draw from uh, territory one, which is think of the, the Northwest. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll be doing that in the, um, at Camp Riolia uh, this coming springtime. So uh, that's, that's a lot of fun. Uh, we have units from all the way almost to the, to the, to the border, uh, the Canadian border. Uh, that, that come to that. And then we often do a, 
um, safety at sea kind of thing, fall event um, as well. So two area events. So think kind of size wise, more like a, a district, but uh, we draw from a lot longer places. Um, we have um, uh, bridge of honors instead of a court of honor. Uh, so some of the, the language is a little different, but basically the concepts are all the same. Uh, we have also a, a formal thing, land ship, uh, that usually at our, our bridge of honors and so forth. Uh, and um, so that's how that works. Instead of going to summer camp, uh, we do, uh, we go out on the water uh, typically for a week and that's called our long cruise. Um, and uh, that's a lot of fun. Uh, different units, um, you know, sometimes it's spread over a little bit of time. Most of us do uh, a week out on the water. Um, I was up uh, um, attending one of the ones up in the Seattle area and they were out for two weeks um, this last summer in the San Juan. So, uh, but that's, that's what we do. Um, and just like, as all scouting units we should be doing is service projects. So uh, some of the interesting ones though, that we, could, we have an opportunity to do a government island. So you may have uh, driven over government island on, you know, the, over the freeway. Uh, you can't get there from by car, you have to get there by boat. And guess what? Um, yeah, so uh, we often do service projects on government island. That's a lot of fun. We work with one of the park rangers there that we've, we've known for years. And actually he's got, is also a good source of Eagle projects too, uh, or quartermaster projects. <laughs> he does, uh, uh, he knows all of the stuff and oh, by the way, there, you have to go on his fast boat to get there. So uh, that's kind of a fun thing. Uh, a little a little different service project. Advancement, um, just like most um, programs, uh, we've got uh, uh, rank advancement as well. And uh, we have four rank advancements. And I like to, uh, and those are, Apprentice, ordinary, able, and quartermaster. Our quartermaster is not the guy who deal, deals with all the equipment <laughs> in like a troop. Uh, it's 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 a really high rank. <laughs> it's it's our highest rank, and um, uh, not too many people get there. But I think of apprentice rank as basically you're being safe. It's the basic requirements. Uh, you're learning how to be safe around uh, the water, the boat, all that stuff. You have to repeat got oath, law, all that sort of thing too. Um, ordinary is what we consider uh, just like in a scout troop, um, it's kind of like first class in that you now have all the basic skills. You can do everything. You know how to camp, you know how to, to, to cook. Um, you're, you're capable, you can be put to work um, and we don't have to watch out for you too much. Um, so ordinary and first class, um, I kind of think of as, as equivalent, although um, in some ways they're not, but, but think of them that way. ABLE is advanced skills. So when you're getting to ABLE, you're capable. <laughs> you're, you're running the boat, you're, you're able to um, teach others, your, um, but you're building on your existing skills. So um, yes, there was lots of knot tying involved, uh, but now you're doing um, uh, things like um, splicing and um, in double braided line and that sorts of things. I mean, this is, it gets it gets more complicated when you get to to, to able. Quartermaster is additional advanced skills, um, and that's a tough requirement. Um, as you might expect, uh, we're on the water. We don't have an alternative for like you know life saving. <laughs> uh, we expect you. So apprentice, you're going to have to do the basic swim test. Ordinary, you're going to have to meet the, the swimming merit badge requirements. For ABLE, you have to do the um, um, life-saving merit badge requirements. And for quartermaster, you have to become a certified lifeguard. There's no other option. Um, again, we're on the water. So uh, that's a requirement um, to, to kind of get to that level. And yes, I've had capable people who had troubles with the swimming and never, never, never get to... <laughs> I had one who eventually went into the Coast Guard uh, that he was having trouble with the whole ordinary thing, okay? That was the one remedial thing he had in, in basic training was swimming. But at any rate, um, uh, if the swimming stuff is kind of important to us. At any rate, we have uh, additional teaching by the quartermaster. Um, you have what's called a quartermaster cruise, which is really great from an adult perspective because basically the quartermaster candidate has to basically run everything and they can't touch anything. <laughs> so they are at this point very used to 
being very capable of doing all the anchoring drills and all that sort of stuff and, and, and handling the boat and they don't get to do that. They have to let their crew do it all. So, uh, but, but direct. So, and then there's a the quartermaster project, which surprisingly that packet looks just like the uh, Eagle packet. Um, but uh, that, that's a quartermaster is a, is a tough, um, a tough rank um, to give you perspective. Um, uh, in scouts, we have what about five, six percent of scouts make it to Eagle. It's a half a percent of Sea Scouts make it to um, quartermaster. So uh, those are those are pretty far, few and far between. So making it there is is pretty impressive. Um, other high adventures uh, type stuff in Sea Scouts. Um, Although these aren't something that a unit does, um, individuals have an opportunity to do uh, what's called SEAL, which is basically a leadership experience, um, um, but it's on the water. So uh, you can see here, there are a variety of ones that were offered this last year. Uh, some are on sailboats, some are on paddle craft. Yes, we do paddle craft. Okay, so you don't have to have a big boat to do Sea Scouts. Um, if you know, you're in the paddle craft or the whitewater thing. Yes, you can. You too can do Sea Scouts. Uh, doesn't require lots of, of vessels and all that sort of stuff. Many do, but it's not a requirement. Um, I know of ships that have you know trailer sailboats, little little guys that they 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 uh, they drag behind them and they go to lakes and and they go sailing on lakes. Um, so uh, Sea Scout units come in come in a variety of different kinds of sizes. But at any rate. Um, so SEAL is a great opportunity. Typically, you don't go to the one that's close, like the Seattle one. Um, you would go to one of these other places. So I've had somebody that went to Galveston Bay. And I've had somebody go down to uh, the San Francisco Bay. Uh, they, they were both on sailboats, uh, even though they came from a powerboat kind of world. So at any rate, great opportunities. Um, I had somebody say, Oh, that was the most fun experience. I never want to have to repeat because it's, it's a lot of hard work, <laughs> but they had a great time. They learned a lot. And I got to tell you, the, the growth that I see out of my scouts that, that uh, go to SEAL has been, been remarkable. So, um, and I'm sure other units have had things with, you know, sending people off to the Nile or what have you as well. But uh, SEAL is, is a great experience for Sea Scouts. And they, if they, they do well, they'll get this little dolphin pin to put on their uniform. So yeah, that's kind of cool too. Here's another high adventure thing uh, that you don't, don't see very often. Um, and basically this is the uh, Coast Guard um, Bark Eagle. Um, little history on that was is that that was a war prize. It's, it's uh, from Germany uh, in World War II. And that is what all of the Coast Guard Academy cadets uh, spend time learning how to sail. Um, and so our Sea Scouts actually get a chance to go out for a couple of weeks um, on that. And you have to apply. Um, you have to be at least ordinary, I think, but uh, you can apply and, and be selected to be part of the crew that goes out on that. Um, and uh, I've had, I think, one, one person from my unit that, that's done that, but I've known a number of people that have, and, and they, they think it's just an amazing experience. So another high adventure activity in Sea Scouts uh, that you may not be familiar with. So um, I think that's, that's pretty cool. That counts as high adventure in my book. Um, other things, um, you know, ship up Seattle called the propeller. SSS, Sea Scout ship, Sea Scout ship propeller. Uh, so that's the name of their, their ship, this propeller, as well as their vessel is called propeller. At any rate, they went, um, just to, again, kind of give you some perspective of what units can do. Um, they left from Seattle and then they went to Southeast Alaska and back. And that was three weeks um, going through the inside passage and so forth. Um, that was part of their long cruise one year. They don't normally do that, but they did that one year. Uh, it was a few years ago. Um, actually, I had a chance to do that. That was a lot of fun. At any rate, our unit, um, we've actually been to the Bahamas a couple of times. We fly to either the Bahamas or uh, to uh, Miami, I guess is where we were. And then and then we took sailboats around and so forth. So um, again, things that uh, we have done in the past as part of our long cruises. Um, and yes, there are, there are national jamborees. Occasionally you'll see a ship that goes to, to a national jamboree too. So anyway, um, some pictures of our unit. Um, 
Okay, so I'm bragging a little bit, I guess. I don't know. That's our vessel there, um, the upper left. Uh, that's that's our the vessel's name's actually is called Odyssey. <laughs> it's not called Deja Vu, um, but uh, that's that's our boat. Um, and uh, you know, some of the things. You, there's a government island picture we were off doing a service project. Um, and yes, we still do paper charts occasionally. Um, that's a re requirement to to be able to do that sort of stuff. Yes, we're moving more to to the electronic stuff, um, but uh, you need to, to understand how the backup works. So uh, they get a chance to, uh, to do that sort of thing. So that's, that's, that's a lot of fun. Regatta, these are actually a little older pictures. Uh, so the older style uniforms there, but uh, um, swimming, obviously, um, there were, there's dress blues. We don't use those dress blues anymore. We've, we've moved to them more like this uniform. This is the official Sea Scout uniform nowadays. So. And there's always a friendly game of tug of war as part of the thing. Uh, here's some other events: uh, ring buoy toss, and of course navigation. There was a quartermaster cruise we did a long time ago. It's kind of fun. That was our older vessel. That vessel in the upper left is now actually the one up in Dallas, which is where it used to be. So back there, well, yeah, the Dallas. And yeah, other. Beacon Rock, interesting place to go, fun place. Uh, service projects there as well. So, um, again, I know people ask me about the sea base. Um, for those who are less familiar with kind of the, the, the history on that, um, it was located on um, Marine Drive uh, across from the airport. And um, yeah, that's, that's where it was. So, Oh, I've got a couple pictures. So the, the little bit of the history on this is, is that we used to have a sea base uh, where all of the ships had their vessels and we had some um, um, boat houses and that sort of thing. Uh, it was a leased facility, uh, leased grounds anyway. And uh, we leased it from, the council leased it from the, uh, the Port of Portland. And we would renew that lease every few years. And, um, Bottom line is, is that between the port and the council decided not to renew the lease. And so as a result, uh, we all need to find new homes. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and we have, um, uh, but we're, we're scattered a little bit uh, at, at different marinas and so forth now. But uh, for those, this is what it used to look like. The sign's not there anymore, but, we, but you may have gone along Marine Drive and seen this Sea Scout base. And if you look at it from the car perspective, you don't know what's on the other side of that hill. Um, and there was that little house with the little light on it. The top you can sort of see on the, over the bike path there. Uh, the house actually is still there, but at any rate, uh, this is how you kind of got into that place. Um, and the sign's been, is off a museum now, but at any rate, this is what it used to, to look like a little bit. Uh, again, people, kind of asked me, uh, this was kind of back um, what, what it used to look like. So we had the sailboats on the upper dock and we had our power vessels in the lower dock. Um, so, um, but that, that's what it was we were talking about. So that's kind of the, um, yeah, that's, that, that, well, that's, that was basically what I wanted to, to, to kind of let people know about, but I think the more fun part is to answer questions. So maybe we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so folks who are joining us, they can ask questions there on Facebook or here in the in the in the chat. We have a few folks who joined us and whatnot. Then, and, and uh, but I have questions too. So, sure. so now where where are you located now? All of the all the different yeah. units and whatnot. Just it's because so, then it helps people go like, oh, I'm, I had no idea, and it's right down the right. street or whatever. Right. So, well, let me hit the the far one. Uh, we have a unit out of the Dalles, okay, and um, actually. <laughs> Unfortunately, last fourth, just before the 4th of July, part of that marina burned down and the Sea Scout vessel was actually attached to one of those docks. And um, a former Sea Scout actually swam to that boat and released that boat. So it, did, it was one of the boats that did not burn up. That boat is now up at um, Arlington um, and they're rebuilding that dock. So it will go back to the to the Dallas, but right at the moment, it's not at the Dallas, so even though that's where the ship is. Um, but uh, the boats, but the vessel's fine. But at any rate, so there's the Dallas. Most of us uh, that were at the sea base um, are 
for the most part in the Hayden Island area. So um, there's a variety of marinas in that, that area and that's where most of them are. Although there are a couple of units of which mine is one that's on Multnomah Channel and that's the channel between Sobeys Island and kind of the rest of Oregon. So um, my unit is, is, is before you get to the um, uh, Sobeys Island Bridge, uh, the other unit is down a little farther. Uh, so um, we probably need to update our pins and so forth, but like, but, but often our units have an, another place we also meet, you know, whether it be a, a lodge or a church or what have you. So most of the pins are usually associated with the, uh, the meeting place as opposed to where the boat is moored. But uh, we're, we're mostly, I would say in the, in the, in the Hayden Island area for the most part. Gotcha. And in terms of rank advancement and whatnot, do you have kids who are in Scouts BSA as well as Sea Scouts? How does that kind of, you bet. how does that plan? <laughs> how does that work? You bet. It's, it's awesome um, because um, we absolutely have ones that are, are, are multiple registered. Okay. And I, you know, if we can keep um, a youth in the scouting program for another year or two or more that that's that's amazing okay so i view this as an older scout program and so there's no real conflict you know other than the usual schedule fund but um between and, and i will say more than half of my youth in my ship are dual registered they're in a troop and they're in our our scout troop and um Sometimes that's more, sometimes that's less, but, but in general, we have people that are both uh, either came from a troop or are currently in a troop. And I can't tell you, we've probably done more Eagle projects than we have quartermaster projects. So uh, we definitely encourage them to stay in their troop. Uh, but oftentimes you get an older uh, scout who's, you know, they're getting real close to their Eagle and now what are they going to do? And they may be interested in a little bit more adventure, uh, more scouting experiences, um, and they're, they're happy to, to not be doing the same uh, three um, knots with the younger kids. So um, it, it allows them another, no, another avenue. It, it's not for everybody, but there's a certain group of, of people that really gravitate to this. Um, and, and we've got lots of, of uh, stories of them, you know, you know, getting all greasy and working on equipment and, you know, things that they may not do in a troop but they, they, they do get a chance to do um, in, in, a, in a ship. Yeah, and you were sharing, they, they can be up to age 21, right? So uh, up, to, up to 21, absolutely. And so um, that's, yeah, so there's, I, in fact, one of my recent new, new scouts is um, 17, right? He joined at 17, and, um, but he's, he's really both feet in. He's still supporting his troop, but um, and, and doing that, and he hasn't finished his eagle yet, darn it. So he he needs to. We need to help him with that. But uh, um, and I expect he'll continue uh, there for a while. But um, anyway, but now he's having a great time with us. Nice. We have a question on Facebook. What are the and you went over this a little bit, but what are the positions slash titles of the youth leadership on a ship? That's a <laughs> yes, good one to go yes, over. Yes, that's yet. a great one. Because it is I a little confusing. Sorry, I, should, it's... I, I I should have had it included a slide. My mistake for not including both the, the, the adult side and the youth side. Um, because, um, you know, just like with, because uh, you, you learned all of that language in a scout troop and, and now what's the equivalent and there are equivalents, okay? So um, let me start with the um, adult side. So just like you have a scout master, you have a skipper, okay? And their assistants, whether it be an assistant scout master on our side, it's called a mate. Um, so they're, they're the ones who are actively working, um, there. So, um, I'm currently a mate, although I'm going to reach our time. I'm going to become skipper again, but at any rate, uh, so, so those are the, the, those pieces, uh, there on the adult side, on the youth side. And typically we're a little smaller than a, than a, we're not like a big troop, at least in this area. <laughs> There's some units in, in the San Francisco area that you know have 70 kids. But um, at any rate, in this area, typically we're like a small troop. So our instead of having a senior patrol leader, we have a bosun. Okay, so bosun is our top 
youth officer. Um, and then uh, underneath him, they, he may have, um, you know, zero to a couple of bosun's mates that are like ASPLs, uh, assistant patrol leaders. And then uh, depending on the size of the unit, you may have a crew leader. Um, so a little bit of the, <laughs> the venturing piece there, but it's, it's, it's called a crew, right? I mean, that your, your ship has a crew. And so you have a crew leader and potentially assistant. Uh, the, the, then you have, again, um, depending on the size and so forth, uh, you, in, instead of a, a scribe, <laughs> you'll have a yeoman. <laughs> instead of a quartermaster, you'll have a storekeep. Um, again, we don't always use all of these, these positions and we have a media specialist. Um, and so those are kind of the, the, the classic ones that you see in a, in a, in a ship. Gotcha. Uh, another question was, are all ships on the coast or are there landlocked units that only utilize lakes and rivers? That may be a general yes. question, but yeah. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, I mean, here we're blessed with the, the Columbia um, nice big river uh, to, to work in. Uh, absolutely not. We have um, units. Um, <laughs> the most successful Sea Scout unit ship of all time was the Kansas. And guess where it was located? It was the Kansas. <laughs> they, they're not very, they're, they're not going now, but they won basically the national flagship for so many years that they basically kind of retired it for a while. Uh, because they were so successful. Uh, so no, uh, we have units. Um, my wife went to what's called Sea Badge, um, and she met some of the people in uh, that. She went to Texas when she took hers, but she um, she met people from uh, Colorado. Okay, and they had some Sea Scout ships in Colorado that were mostly small boats, um, and so they trailer boated around and so forth. Uh, we have a uh, a ship south of us in Eugene, Oregon, and they, you know, very active, and they, they have a lake, and and they're small boats. So, have it. Water is kind of essential, but uh, what the form of that water looks like, uh, not not so much. Um, I I had a uh, our first committee chairman uh, was a skipper in uh, um, New York, upstate New York, and when the water froze. They would go out ice sailing, you know, with with the the, the if you've seen those kind of boats uh, where they have um, rails and stuff, and they 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 go really fast on the on ice lakes. But any rate, so not having a, a big body of water is not a requirement for for sea scout ships. And you mentioned the one in Seattle. Interestingly enough, we were our troop was up in the San Juans a couple of years ago, and we mm -hmm. came across the unit that was was it the was it the Odyssey? Is that what it was? Probably. And big, big, huge ship. And sailboat. Yeah, sailboat. Big right, sailboat. right, right. Yep. And they were saying that they do these long trips. Mm -hmm. And you were mentioning that some of the scouts can go up there and do that kind of thing or unit yep. scan. And um, yep. Yeah. Odyssey um, is actually out of Tacoma, uh, Sea Scout Ship Odyssey. And um, they have in the past uh, had charters. And so, like a, a ship or a a troop could actually, you know, charter them and go out on a big thing. Uh, that, that's how they kind of made a lot of their money was actually chartering. Uh, so ships or units would go and, and charter their, their vessel and, and go out and, and do that. So, um, yeah, we all hear about uh, the Florida sea base, but that's not the only one option around there. Um, so I don't know what the current status is. Uh, last time I saw it a few months ago, the Oh, still had a mass out of it, <laughs> but at any rate, um, yes, there, there are a variety of, of units up in the Seattle area. Uh, it's great, great times. Because they're close to the San Juans or they've got the lakes it's, up it's there. It's amazing cruising grounds up there. So, Do we ever have any on the coast here? Are there, or have there been in the past? Um, yes. So we used to have one in Astoria. And in fact, we're still, we're trying to get um, another ship started in Astoria. So if you've got youth in the Astoria area, I might, might uh, let, let's talk because uh, uh, we'd like to get that going again. We used to have one called the Flying Cloud in that area, um, but uh, that one um, kind of went away and, but we're trying to get one going again. So we have one there, or hopefully to have one there. Uh, we have had over time, um, we've had ones down, the, down some in the, in the coast. Uh, so Newport area and so forth. I don't know how active they are right at the moment, but uh, um, yeah. 
So interesting. Another oh, question. We got not, oh, when, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say up in um, uh, the um, not Everdeen, the uh, Grays Harbor is in the process of putting one together. We should have that ship launched here in another month or so. Hmm, nice. Here's another question. Do you see, you're mentioning all the service projects, but that's really unique and fun. My son and I were recently talking about something similar and and uh -huh. uh, doing something on the islands. Like, wow, could you even do that? And so that's yep. really really interesting. Somebody was asking if you have your own version of the Order of the Arrow or <laughs> yeah. So um, we um, so when they changed the requirements and and you know we we when we got to Scouts BSA. OA changed some of the requirements uh, as far as, um, and, and basically, Sea Scouts are now allowed in, in OA. So uh, basically, we have to be ordinary rank um, and, you know, do our, the, the night's camping, all that sort of thing. But, uh, and, and they allow us not to be in a tent, right? We can be on our boat. So for, we get to count those. <laughs> but uh, bottom line is, is that yes. Um, and in fact, um, you will you will find Sea Scouts uh, becoming more active in OA. And in fact, we were at the the last one. We did a little presentation. My bosun went out there and did that. So uh, we're we're going to be planning on having elections and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so we're we're we are, we are part of the OA actually. <laughs> we're still trying to get people in and like to do more with the OA. But uh, um, yeah, I'm vigil. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, but at any rate. Although I did that from my my traditional scouting side rather than from my sea scout side. Nice, awesome, yeah. Just to, such an interesting array of opportunities. I think a lot of times we just don't, you know, we don't think about certain things, especially for for all of you who are new. There are just so many great opportunities besides what you're doing with current units, like you'd mentioned, going to Swamp Base or the High Adventure trips, or you know, there's just so many great opportunities. This is just a great example of of other things that are kind of outside of the norm of what you may think of when you think of scouts, and and so it's really it's really really fun. And um, I was asking, I think I asked you before, you know, well, do you do Christmas ships? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I will explain that one Since too. Tis the I season, just, we got to ask, are you in the Absolutely. Christmas ships? So um, when we had the sea base, um, the council owned a uh, um, Reliant, which was a 65, 64 foot vessel, uh, motor vessel. And it was um, what we call, uh, it had a certificate of inspection, Coast Guard documented vessel. And we were allowed up to 40, basically 40 passengers. Um, and when we had that vessel, we would often, ships would basically take a night and then they could use that however they wanted. And so most of us, ours included, would basically take it out for the night and we would invite people on board. And, and, um, and some people use, some ships used it as a fundraiser, you know, so for 15 bucks a head, you could go out on the boat and, uh, see the Christmas ships and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, when we sold the sea base, uh, we, we unfortunately don't have a place to put uh, the Reliant anymore. So uh, that has been sold. So we don't have that um, asset anymore. However, if you get with a ship, a, a, a unit, um, you know, maybe you can work something out <laughs> to go out and so forth. Uh, so what I would say is, is you know, talk to some of those, those, those your favorite uh, Sea Scout ship and so forth and see what's, what's an option. Um, so honestly, where our vessel is, we're, we're planning on, on, on um, we're not taking the boat out because all the Christmas ships are going right past our boat. <laughs> so we're going to set up our lawn chairs and, and, and watch the Christmas ships from our, basically our backyard. Um, so uh, that's, that's how that's going. So it's a little bit different, but definitely some of the ships are taking, going out as usual and um, joining the, the Christmas ships. And actually, you don't wanna actually be part of the Christmas ships because if you're part of the Christmas ships, you have to stay in line and do all of the maneuvers. And so you like see your boat, the boat in front of you and the boat behind you. It's much better to be a spectator and they all go around you. That's the way to, to, to actually see them. So at any rate. I see. Nice, nice. Well, I've been on them before on the Christmas ships before, and there was a there was one guy who had the 
this sort of fire engine and police that would turn yep. his lights would change from a fire engine to a police car. And he was zipping around everybody. <laughs> it's yep. pretty, it yep. pretty funny. Well, awesome. Well, uh, well, thanks so much. This is really great. I'm not seeing any more questions rolling in. So that's, so that's all good. Well, and, and just as a reminder gang that, that what's also neat is this is another opportunity where you can keep scouting until age 21. What a great, great opportunity. I'm assuming you guys have had, You've had scouts that have gone on to Coast Guard or the Navy and things of that nature as well. And, um, you know, such a great, great way to transition into that. I see one more question here about Sea Scouts um, oh. have sent councils as BSA. We, we are part of the council. We're, we're another type of unit inside the council. So um, I'm, I'm a CPC member, you know, uh, we just happen to do stuff with other ships in other councils. So um, just like you do stuff with other districts or other council wide, we do stuff territory wide. So, but we're part of the council. Yep, and you can see all their goodies at cpcbsa.org slash Sea Scouts. And it's great. You can see some pictures there. You can look at the different units and uh, just get kind of get a little, a little of the experience. It's really, really neat and unique, like we said. And uh, so awesome. Well, thanks. Thanks so much, Neil, for, for joining us. I'll go back to share my share my screen as we as we head out. This is uh, this is really, really fantastic. Again, you can go to cpcbsa.org slash Sea Scouts, and that's where you can get contact information. You can ask Neil questions or the rest of the team there you can ask questions really really fantastic stuff so thanks neil so much for joining us today really appreciate it and a little teaser we are doing some other other webinars of course so we have these the upcoming ones we've got one on empathy and communication on december 1st we've got on december 8th we're going to talk about eagle scout scholarships just a reminder for those of you who are working towards eagle if you're working towards eagle this is really interesting if you're already an eagle scout you're senior you should definitely tune into this also check your email because we had lots of information go out this last week about that. So because the application process is opening up here pretty soon. So really good information, not just on we have local scholarships here in the Cascade Pacific Council, but also national. So really great, interesting opportunities for scholarships. So definitely tune in there and, uh, and check that out and check your email as well. Also tons of upcoming webinars. It's going to be really fantastic. Really excited to, uh, to share all those with everybody. And we're going to talk about scout book and patrol method and backcountry stuff and backpacking and a lot of my favorite topics, which is really, really fun. So thanks all for joining us. Really appreciate you being here. And of course, this will be recorded at uh, cpcbsa.org slash webinars. And you'll have links to that in your email. For those of you who are in the Cascade Pacific Council, you'll get our, you'll get our uh, Compass Points email newsletter tomorrow. So you'll have that. And just want to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Really appreciate your time. Thanks again, Neil. And we will see you all next time.